It's the Q. Here is your host, Jeff Crick. Hi, Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're on the ground at the Weston St. Francis in San Francisco, California at HBaseCon 2015. We were here a few years ago, but we wanted to come and get an update on what's been going on. Obviously, pretty exciting times in this space. And we're joined uh, in this segment by uh, our newest co-host, George Gilbert from Wikibon. Welcome, George. Good to be here, thanks, Jeff. Absolutely. And, uh, and our guest is John Carter from Carter Page. Carter Page. John Carter was a movie <laughs> <laughs> that I don't think Mars. did very well. You have not yeah. been to Mars. <laughs> Carter Page from Google, welcome. Thank you. And uh, I guess you had a great keynote to kick off today, so tell us a little bit about what you covered in the keynote for those that missed it. Sure. So uh, what I talked about was how Google's mission statement, which is to organize the world's information, plays into our involvement with the open source community, both with us initially launching the OSDI paper in 2006 that allowed HBase to be to be built, to basically build a clone of, of Bigtable, and also talked about how both with uh, with Bigtable and now releasing Google Cloud Bigtable and with HBase, the ability to have a database that stores the world's information is another way that we're actually extending the the uh, mission statement for the company or implementing it. So tell us a little bit about. Um, like many of our mainstream customers obviously are familiar with traditional SQL databases. There's a, cl a class of applications that's exploding that you know don't lend themselves well to that. You know that you guys wanted to have as sort of uh, references to start with. What are what are the characteristics and what are some of those apps? Well, so in terms of what Bigtable and HBase provide as as no SQL application is. You, you get your trade-off of you allow this scalability to mind-blowing sizes, essentially, to potentially into petabytes. And what happens is the trade-off is you, you are unable to efficiently do the kind of joins that you would do with, with a SQL system. So with a SQL system, you think about how you want to organize the data, and then you come along and you write applications on top of that. Now, no SQL, the trade-off you get, uh, the bargain you have to make, to get this kind of crazy scalability is you have to decide ahead of time how I'm going to use this data and how I'm going to query it. And you organize the data accordingly to fit in your database schema with how you're going to access it. So the advantages of, of this is it allows you to do things of crazy scale to be able to store, like I said, really large amounts of data. It also allows you to do really high throughput types of operations. So Internet of Things is a very popular space right now. This includes gas meters that are spread around, around the country. Uh, with, um, you know, there's medical device companies that are interested in recording data. There are phone companies that are constantly taking temperature readings, battery readings from your phone. And when you call in and say, I have a problem, they want to be able to immediately pull up and see what's going on. And you need a database of this sort that can handle the kind of millions of writes per second that allow, allow this to be possible. It's, obvious, it's another phenomenon too we hear about a lot of shows, kind of you know schema on write versus schema on read, and because you don't necessarily know what the schema that you need when you're getting all this data. I'm sure you guys had a ton of experience in that in Google as you guys have just continued to expand these base applications over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it is a, a tricky thing, and a lot of times you can find yourself painted into a little bit of a corner with the if you don't get the schema right initially. So it's something we really think about a lot. In fact, in, internally in, in the company, we have schema reviews with the, where the, the Bigtable team will actually go through with, with internal teams and help them to design the, the schema out. And it's not something to be thought of lightly. You really have to figure out, what do you want to do with this? What happens if I want to query in this way or that way? How am I, how am I going to get to that data? And if a little bit of forethought into that, into getting a good design, pays enormous dividends on, on the tail end as you're growing up and you're scaling and you find you actually have a lot of room to grow. So data modeling isn't dead. <laughs> no. <laughs> but a, a, another question, which is, I mean, you have, you're running big table at a scale that, you know, no one else can, can match. Um, I mean, no other cloud provider and, and of course, um, you know, no enterprise vendor is going to, is going to get anywhere close. What can, how much of an, an advantage can someone who's considering deploying HBase on-prem get from running it in Google Cloud Platform? Well, so the trade-offs are, there's numerous things that people look at. Some people are initially concerned about, you know, uh, placement of the data, for instance. That's something we actually saw by, you know, Google Cloud Platform by actually when you, when you decide to 
provision a cluster, we will actually tell you exactly where it's going to be. This cluster is going to be right in the middle of the United States in the Midwest, or this cluster is going to be in uh, in Taiwan, or this this cluster is going to be in the EU, and we'll let you know so your data is actually going to be there. So that's that's one thing that I think people are concerned about in general that we hope we have alleviated. The the big downside to running an HBase server yourself is there's a lot of operational overhead to it, right? And uh, particularly if you have a large company, you have a lot of clusters to run, and that's and that can be a real headache. If you're a small company, putting together a large enough operations team to be able to have around-the-clock pager service is complicated, and it's um, um, you know it's 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 expensive, frankly, to to hire enough people to be able to do that, and it can exhaust them too. And so, by using Google Cloud Platform, you for a big table the customers are able to actually get Bigtable SREs as their own support. And that's a really powerful thing. We've been doing this for 10 years, so we know how to run these things you know, and react to issues that may come up as quickly as possible. There's, um, like Microsoft uses an example with Azure SQL DB, you know, that there's, um, they have 1.3 million database instances under management, and you know, if, if you, if, if someone tried to do that with 30 to 50, you know, um, databases per admin, <laughs> you'd have, you know, 30,000 um, admins in, in Azure. Is there a similar metric for the productivity of Google running this versus someone on-prem doing it? I mean, I don't have a good number of what an HBase, how many administrators you need for, you know, how many HBase clusters. There is certainly a significant operational overhead. There is an entire panel or set series of panels here at the conference about operations because it's such such a headache to get right. And sometimes people have very specific needs where they want to run their own clusters. But frankly, as I said, we've been doing this for a long time. We've figured out how to, how to automate these things to enormous scale. So what we've done is, is, is our, we, we have, rather than, site, than, than operations who are sitting there kind of watching and pressing buttons, we have engineers whose entire job is to watch what might go wrong and build tooling around it. Without automation and the, the immense amount of automation and tooling and reporting that we have built, there's no way we can actually manage the kind of data sets we have at Google. So pretty much anything that is stored is persisted at Google. Any application that has any kind of persistent data is using Bigtable in some way. And so it's incredibly mission critical. And that's the kind of reliability that customers who would want to use Google Cloud Bigtable could expect from their own applications. One, so, oh, uh, one other question that now that you have an HBase personality on Bigtable, do you see um, Bigtable becoming an integral part of the Hadoop ecosystem hosted by Google? I mean, will you be part of that ecosystem in the cloud, like like Azure has its own, you know, flavor? So, so yes. I mean, I think you know, there's two reasons that we were very interested in the HBase. In, in, in using the HBase API as our way of of connecting with the with Java developers, with Java Java programs that are that are looking to use Bigtable, uh, the first is we needed to have an API, right? Something, and we could either invent our own standard and throw it out there with a mix of a million other standards and drive people nuts, or we could pick something that we know is well is is tested. I mean, the number of large tech companies in the world that use HBase is, is pretty phenomenal. They've taken it through its paces. We know this API is solid, and we know that if we expose it with this API, it's going to be something that's going to fit a lot of a lot of use cases. Also, by using open source kind of as our way of defining our API, rather than doing some kind of industry consortia or something like that, we feel this is a much more nimble way for us to react to things that come up in the market. Whether you know new new ingestion pipelines come in like Spark or things like this. These things, the you know, the HBase community is going to react very quickly around it, and we, as part of that community, uh, helping with the API, want to be able to take advantage of that. So now, the second part is, with the HBase API, we get integration points with everything that integrates with HBase. Okay. We have we have a managed Hadoop cluster you can spin up on Google Cloud Platform. I click a button, and you have a few hundred workers that are now talking to Google Cloud Bigtable or to HBase if you want. We also have the th same thing we are going to be integrating with Spark and Storm and Kafka, and we're going to be continuing to look at things on an opportunistic basis as, as customers are telling us what are their most important integrations to fit into this. Okay. Yeah, it's, 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 great. it's a great story, and, it, and uh, it's interesting, though, that you tie it directly back to the mission. 
um, of getting all the information, first collecting and then making all that information available. And that's, that's a core piece. And then the, the, we keep hearing about, George, the incredible innovation that comes with open source, with an engaged community. And I'm sure you guys don't have a hard time getting uh, developers engaged as maybe some of the, the, the other big kind of classic old school companies do, which I think is a real challenge. Bloomberg said something interesting, really interesting to us. We went in asking, you know, do we do you see a new sort of set of applications growing up alongside the traditional applications based on SQL DBMSs? And they said, no, we don't see it that way. We see this infrastructure converging with with the traditional SQL databases only at a faster pace because of the innovation cycle, and you know, at a low and a lower cost as well. Do you see it unfolding that way? Well, that's a, that's a very interesting question. There is certainly some convergence that's happening with things like Phoenix and people looking to combine things together in a, in a way that is more queryable. Um, you know, we don't throw a SQL interface on top of it. Inside of Google, we throw Dremel or our, our internal, uh, external cloud products called BigQuery. You'll be able to use BigQuery to query Bigtable, which is very much a relational experience. That being said, you, you still get a different performance metric, right? I mean, if you're doing relational stuff with a lot of joins, having a database that is well suited for that is gonna perform differently than throwing it on top of an H-based database. Likewise, if you're trying to ingest a lot of data into, uh, at these kinds of types of scales, into a RDBMS, you're gonna have a hard time as well. So I think the market is definitely trying to push these things uh, together. The architectures are fairly different though, and so it's gonna take, I think, a few more years for it to play out how that's gonna work. So we're getting the hook, uh, but I wanna give you the last word before we go. What do you get, what are you excited about? You guys are, you, you're doing a lot of fun stuff, I'm sure. Yeah. What are you working on today that's you know getting you up in the morning and, and down to work? Well, the Google Cloud Big Table is honestly the thing that gets me the most excited. Uh, when I first, when I first uh, pitched the idea internally and we started building this, the thing that w that really got me up every morning was thinking if the rest of the world had the power of this database that was that allowed Google to scale so many applications, you know, fairly effortlessly instead of having to try and scale, scale them individually, just throwing on a big table and you knew it could scale to a billion users. If everyone else had this same kind of, uh, of power and scalability, what types of things could you build on it? So the thing, now that we've launched this, the next thing that, that is really getting me excited is to see what people are actually going to build on it now. Awesome. Well, Carter, thanks for stopping by. And uh, George, always good. Jeff Frick here. We're at HBaseCon 2015. You're watching theCUBE. Thanks for watching.